Good morning, class. This is Saturday morning, fairly early. I'm still in beautiful Buffalo, New York. It's probably yeah, 10 degrees out there. I don't know. Not looking forward to the trip home right now. Anyway, okay, so I thought for this uh, recording, I would go back and uh, go through the last two examples of the reheat regenerative uh, Rankine cycle and just talk through those. Uh, it'll take a little while, but if you're struggling or you need a reference on how to uh, work these problems, I think this might be helpful to you. So what you see on the screen, and by the way, I've handed you out paper copies of these a long time ago, and I will attach the, uh, <coughs> the file uh, to the email where I send you this link here uh, in a little while. So you'll have this. You, you could print these and have them uh, by your side as you watch the video, uh, but that's, uh, that's up to you. Okay, so this is uh, a problem. We have a reheat regenerative Rankine or vapor power cycle. Uh, with two feed water heaters. So one will be a closed heater, just a simple heat exchanger, uh, steam on one side and uh, feed water on the other, and an open heater, which essentially mixes steam and uh, feed water together. So that mass actually uh, combines. Steam enters <coughs> the uh, high pressure turbine, main steam, at eight megapascals and 480 degrees C and expands to 0.7 megapascals. Uh, and let's go down and look at the cycle and we'll come back and uh, read the rest of this. So let me just scroll down here. And so there we have it. Um, this is main steam and this would be the reheat steam up here we'll get to in a minute. But this is main steam comes out and goes into the first turbine expands you know, partially through the first turbine from state one to state two, and this would be the entire maximum steam flow. We extract a little bit, and this nomenclature, this is first extraction fraction, is Y prime. So then we have one minus Y prime continuing through the second half of the high pressure turbine, in which case we exit. We go back up to the steam generator or the boiler, and uh, that amount of mass then is reheated to whatever conditions were given. Uh, it returns to the second turbine, uh, you could say the low pressure turbine in this case, and enters. And so from this uh, state four to state five, we have the steam flow of one minus Y prime flowing until we get to five. And then we take a second extraction Y double prime out. Uh, it goes to the open feed water heater and that remaining flow uh, through this last section of the low pressure turbine from five to six is one minus Y prime minus Y double prime. Okay, I know nomenclature gets a little bit cumbersome. Uh, this is the low, really low pressure steam that most likely has some moisture in it going to the condenser, which operates at a pretty low pressure, certainly below atmospheric, uh, 0 0.008 megapascals. Heat is transferred to lake water, or it could be air-cooled uh, condenser, whatever, out, uh, out of the working fluid uh, in the condenser to condense it to liquid. It's common to assume saturated liquid down here at seven, but you have to look and see what you're given in the problem. Um, then we go into the first of the feed water pumps, which uh, gets us to the open heater, and the open heater operates at the extraction pressure. So the pressure at five uh, dictates the pressure of the open feed water heater. Uh, so the the uh, condensed feed water out of the condenser then enters, the extraction steam enters, the Y double prime steam enters, they mix. Uh, in reality, there's a little bit of a vent, but we don't put those on there uh, in these uh, basic thermal problems. Also entering is we have the steam extracted uh, from the high pressure turbine 
that condenses in the closed heater. And then uh, since this pressure is two megapascals, then uh, we don't have to pump the condensate. The condensate uh, just flows by pressure difference <clears throat> from the closed heater into the uh, open heater. And so all of these flows mix back together. I've got coming in here one minus Y prime minus Y double prime. I've got Y prime coming in here, and I've got Y double prime coming in here. So algebraically, when you add all those together, we get the entire uh, mass flow, which is now uh, liquid coming out of the open heater, and it is being pumped with a second pump uh, through the closed feed water heater and into the boiler. So we usually would assume uh, that this pressure uh, P10 uh, was equal to uh, P, it could be equal to P11 if we're ignoring pressure drops, and then would be the boiler pressure. Uh, if the cycle is a little bit more realistic, this pressure 10 would have to be higher to accommodate the pressure drop through the closed heater and the piping to get back over here to the boiler. So you just have to read and see what information you're given. Um, and then of course the, the total turbine workout is the, the appropriate mass flow uh, coefficient times the enthalpy differences across the different, uh, so we've got four different turbine sections and they all, well, they don't all have the different mass flows. We have uh, full mass flow here and then we come out. So we have one minus Y1 here, one minus Y1 here. And then the last section has one minus, I'm sorry, Y prime, not Y1. Uh, this, this last flow is one minus Y prime minus Y double prime. Okay, so let's go back up and finish reading the problem, get the numbers here that we'll be working with. Um, so let's see, I think we were down to here. So steam is uh, reheated to 440 C uh, before entering the second turbine. Uh, it then is going to expand to condenser pressure of 0 0.008 megapascals. So we have steam extracted from the first turbine at 2 MPA fed to the closed heater. Feed water leaves the closed heater Okay, so 205 C and 8 megapascals. So here's your condition uh, of the feed water exiting the closed heater, which is going to the boiler or the steam generator. Condensate uh, exits at saturated liquid. That's the closed heater. So that uh, it were saturated liquid coming out of the bottom here, and we were given the condition here. Okay, and that condensate is trapped, which means that we just have uh, basically, it's like a steam trap that will pass liquid, but not vapor <clears throat> to the uh, open feed water heater where it's going to recombine with the other liquid flows. Steam is extracted from the second turbine at 0.3 uh, MPA is also fed to the open heater, which operates at 0.3 MPA. So that extraction pressure from the second uh, turbine or the second extraction sets the operating pressure inside of that open heater. And that's a common assumption. Steam exiting the open heater is uh, saturated liquid at 0.3 MPA. That right, Satcher. Well, yeah, that's a well, that's not steam, <clears throat> that nomenclature, but that's liquid. Okay. It says, oh, the stream, I can't read. Okay. I thought they were saying steam. Okay. So, but that's correct the stream exiting the feed water heater saturated liquid at 0.3 MPA, net power out of the cycle. So they're gonna give you the net <clears throat> uh, power and we'll use this to calculate the mass flow towards the end of the problem. Uh, there's no stray, stray heat transfer from any component uh, to its surroundings. So we, you know, uh, everything's perfectly insulated. 
uh, if the working fluid experiences no irreversibility as it, as it passes through the, the turbines, the pumps, the steam generator, et cetera. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> so we want to determine the thermal efficiency and the mass flow rate of steam. So these are going to be, uh, we don't have an isentropic efficiency for these. So we have no, uh, no heat transfer and no irre irreversibilities. That's hard to say, okay? <clears throat> so let's work, uh, let's start looking at the solution. We can look at the TS diagram here, which will tell you immediately, I'll make this a little bigger, that uh, we're isentropic. You know, these are the turbine drops. You see they're straight down. They're not bending off to the right any. Uh, and so isentropic turbines, which makes it a little bit easier. And isentropic pumps, we go straight up here and straight up here. Uh, it's a little complicated, so you need to study this and look at all of the state points to uh, give you an idea. But we'll be working back and forth with this as we go through the solution here. So let's get on, uh, I guess here's assumptions. Uh, this is pretty common stuff. Uh, each component's analyzed as a control volume at steady state. And so, you know, we'll see some dashed lines. Uh, there's no stray heat transfer. Working fluid undergoes internal reversible processes as it goes through the turbines, pumps, et cetera. So that means that's isentropic. Um, expansion through the trap is a throttling process and we're not considering uh, changes in kinetic and potential energy. <clears throat> okay, so uh, we're not gonna go find all of the enthalpies, we're just gonna plug them in. So that'll be <clears throat> something you need to work on, make sure that you can find these given the states. But <clears throat> so the first thing we're going to do is uh, write the expression for the workflow uh, or the work generated or produced by the first turbine per unit mass of steam. And everything is referenced to the unit mass uh, of steam exiting the boiler at the main steam condition. So everything is uh, referenced back to M.1 here. And so if you multiply across then uh, by M.1, you would just get the, the total amount of work uh, this calculation, as it's shown, will give you the amount of work per uh, kilogram uh, of main steam out of the boiler, okay? Uh, so this is just H1 minus H2 um, is pretty simple. And then uh, there's no multiplier because all of the steam goes through there. And then we have one minus Y prime goes through the second portion of the, of the turbine. And that's times that, uh, just that enthalpy difference. And at this point, they're plugging in a value for this. Uh, we'll see how to calculate this uh, in a little while. But So they're gonna go ahead and uh, plug in. Uh, I may have gotten, when I scan this, I may have gotten these pages out of order, but anyway, we can, we can do it this way. Uh, okay, so that's what the uh, turbine work per kilogram of main steam would be, 572.9 uh, out of the first turbine. Likewise, for the second turbine, we have uh, one minus Y prime on the first portion of the second turbine times that enthalpy difference, and then one minus Y prime minus Y double prime times that enthalpy difference. Here we see that uh, we have found all of these Y primes and we plugged them into this expression and this shows what the uh, numerical result is. Again, this work is referenced to the same mass flow. It's all referenced to uh, M.1. Okay, so this one comes out uh, 720.7 uh, and then we're going to look at the um, first pump. Well, so I mean, this becomes redundant pretty quick. It's the flow uh, multiplier times the enthalpy difference across it. So again, one minus Y prime minus Y double prime numerically is 0.7537. And these are the enthalpies they found. So, you know, this is it's a pretty small amount. 
for the first pump, 0.22 kilojoules per kilogram for the second pump. Um, we take the entire enthalpy difference because the flow is put back together and we have the entire uh, the, the mass flow at this point in the feed water is the mass flow leaving the uh, boiler in the main stem. That enthalpy difference is 8.26. Okay, so the um, now he's going to calculate the uh, boiler heat input and so this would be this is for the main steam and this is for the reheat so the main steam is h1 minus h11 so this is exiting this is feed water in and then uh, we have the full flow and then for the reheat section the flow is reduced by the first extraction so we have one minus y1 times uh, h4 is reheat enthalpy leaving the boiler and h3 is the entering uh, reheat enthalpy uh, from the exit of the high pressure turbine. Plugging in the numbers, we see uh, that turbine is going to produce uh, 2984.4 kilojoules per kilogram. And so um, I'm sorry, this is the <laughs> this is the boiler heat input. I'm sorry. This is not turbine. This is the energy going into the boiler. We've already done the turbines. I'm sorry. I guess I'm still sleepy. Um, okay, so we for the net cycle efficiency, it's what we get out of the first turbine plus what we get out of the second turbine minus the work required uh, by the first pump minus the work required by the second pump divided by the costly input into the boiler. Plugging in all those enthalpies, we see we get um, uh, 41, I'm sorry, 43.1%. Okay, so here is how we do the, uh, calculate the mass flow. So we take the, this, this capital W dot cycle, this is the absolute magnitude that's coming out of this. I mean, with, you know, taking the mass flow into consideration. So this is the 100 megawatts. So this is, you know, in utility parlance, that's a pretty small unit, but anyway. So that's the 100 megawatts. And then we have to get our units right. And so that's what they're doing up here in the numerator. Um, 100 megawatts times 3,600 to seconds are involved in, in, in a watt unit. <clears throat> seconds per hour uh, times 1,000 kW per megawatt. Okay, and that's adjust the units up here. And then we divide that by, this is the net. Uh, now this is when you do this arithmetic in the denominator, you get 1285.1 uh, <coughs> kilojoules per kilogram. And so this, this arithmetic <coughs> gives us 2.8 times uh, 10 to the fifth kilograms per hour. So this is a neat trick. Um, if, if you're asked to calculate something like this, you always have to look for, you have to have some absolute number out of the cycle. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, when I scan these, I got these things uh, backwards, I apologize, but I'm not gonna re-record this. So this is now where we really started the problem. Uh, and this is just finding the enthalpies. Okay, so, and th this relates back to a previous example, but you know, you can, you can, so they're pulling some, but this is just looking this stuff up at the given point on uh, for the enthalpy. It's just superheated steam. So that's a pretty simple lookup. Uh, state two, that's the extraction, the first extraction going to the closed heater. So we know uh, the entropy at two is the entropy at one because it's isentropic. So then you have to interpolate. Uh, and this, this would be in the superheat tables. So you have to do an interpolation to get this H2. Uh, so the state at the exit of the first turbine, uh, or whether pulling that from a previous example. But again, uh, 
what you have to do is uh, you have to use this entropy because the entropy at one, two, and three, that's across the uh, uh, high pressure turbine. Let me go back up and look. So here's one, here's two, and here's three. So if we're isentropic, these entropies are all of the same. You have a pressure, you have an entropy. All right, you got to go to the steam tables and find it. So this part, this number two was still superheated. Number three is down inside the dome. So it changes the calculation a little. So you got to make sure you can handle that. Okay, so that finds us uh, H3. And then state four, we're given uh, are we given a uh, pressure and a temperature? It's superheated again. So that should be a pretty simple lookup. And then uh, for uh, five and six, uh, it's isentropic expansion through the turbine. So it's the same procedure. Uh, at four, we take this entropy and it's the same at five and it's the same at six. <coughs> So it's uh, pretty simple. Um, and this is going to show you the calculation at six. Um, so we use the entropies to find the quality, 0.9382. And then we use that quality to find that enthalpy. Because we're inside the dome, we're a mixture of saturated liquid and saturated vapor. And so this is the calculation for H6. Uh, let's see, H7 in front of the condenser, saturated liquid at a given pressure, that's a lookup. Uh, for eight, we do the pump trick. <coughs> so it's the enthalpy at seven plus the isentropic pump work, which is specific volume at seven times pressure difference. Uh, be sure to get your units right. So say if you, if you use, um, this is megapascals. If you use megapascals, you don't have any conversion. That's kind of the trick to remembering it uh, quickly and easily. So, because this is 0.3 megapascals and this is 0 0.008 at the condenser exit. And this is the specific volume uh, of the saturated liquid. So do the math, uh, 174. 0.17 kilojoules per kilogram. Uh, let's see. Uh, again, let, let's see. So that gets us eight. Let's go back up. I'm getting lost. Let's see. Where is nine? Okay. Nine is here. So we know this one. And then nine is the enthalpy here and I believe we're, let's see, what are we told? Let's go back. Oops. Okay, let's see. Uh, liquid leaving the open heater, <coughs> saturated liquid at three. So that's, that's easy. That's just a look up. And then 10, again, we do the pump trick, enthalpy in, specific volume, delta P in megapascals. So we get that. And then condensate, uh, leaving the closed heater is saturated. That's coming out of the bottom. That's being trapped back to the open heater. So that's uh, just a look up. And when you go <clears throat> when you go through this trap, the first law, ignoring kinetic potential energy changes, says that the enthalpy is constant across a throttling process. So that makes that pretty darn easy. So you. Uh, this is saturated liquid at 2 MPa. That's a lookup. So once you've got that, the enthalpy is the same at 13. So that one's a piece of cake. Uh, so enthalpies are not too bad. This one, this problem is probably a little easier than some of them in that regard. Uh, let's see. So that gets us. That got us what 10. I guess this is, I'm losing my state points here just a minute. Okay. Yeah, so that got us 12 and 13, uh, 11. I, I think we're, uh, 
I think we're pretty good because we're given a pressure at a temperature so we can go find this one. So that should find all of the states for us. Let's see what he does on the web in there. Yeah, okay, there we go. So he's finding 11 here. So that's that's pretty well defined. Okay, so to find the uh, extraction fractions, we simply do, and you want to go to the highest pressure heater first because you can write the uh, energy balance, uh, and it will just involve the Y prime. If you start at the low pressure heater, there's Y primes and Y double primes there, and you, you know. You, you can't just solve directly for one of them. So it's easier to go to the high pressure heater first. Uh, here he's just given the definitions. Uh, y prime is that extraction mass flow uh, at location two divided by the main steam flow. And Y double prime is the extraction flow at location uh, what is that, five uh, divided by uh, M dot one. Okay. So if we do the energy balance, uh, uh, mass flow uh, coefficient times the enthalpy summation in equals the mass flow coefficient times summation of enthalpies out. So you can see if you multiply back across this, uh, what did we had? We've got coming in, we've got H2 times Y prime. Going out the bottom, we've got uh, H12 times Y prime. So this one's positive, this one's negative. And then we, we factored it out over here and divided through. And um, we have the full uh, main steam flow at uh, H11 is X and E minus H10 N. So the, the math is pretty simple. So we see about 15.22% of the main steam flow is extracted at that first extraction. Okay. And then you can go on to the second feed water heater and you just do summation, uh, the same, the same approach. So you've got Y double prime as the, the mass coefficient times uh, H5 and then plus uh, one minus Y prime minus Y double prime times H6. This is what's rolling around from the bottom of the condenser back in. And <clears throat> this is what's uh, trapped in from the uh, closed heater, Y prime times H13 and then minus H9. Uh, that has to equal zero, or you could say, you know, put that on the other side of the equation, say all this other stuff equals H9, however you want to do it. Uh, and now you know uh, y, y prime and so uh, you can solve algebraically for Y double prime and then substitute in everything and bingo, you know what uh, Y double prime is 9.41% of the uh, main steam mass flow. Okay, so I kind of did that backwards, but I forgot that uh, <laughs> I scanned them backwards a long time ago. Anyway, I hope that helps. Uh, I'm going to pause this and then come back for a second and do the uh, the example behind us. Okay, <clears throat> so let's uh, continue on on this last problem, and uh, this one is uh, where we have the isentropic efficiencies uh, for the uh, turbines, and I believe the yeah for the pumps too. Everything is point. 85 or 85 percent isentropic efficiency. I mean, we could we could have a different number for each one, but I guess just uh, simplify a little bit. I decided whoever made up this problem decided to make them all the same. Um, uh, we can take let's take a little look at our cycle here before we read this thing. Um, so we've got all kinds of stuff going on. So we've got what. <sighs> Uh, here is our main steam coming out, goes into the first turbine. Uh, so we're going to expand through that first turbine section. Now we don't have any feed water heaters, so that part's nice, but uh, we do have three turbine sections. So they're going to wear you out on working uh, the isentropic efficiency relations for the turbines. So anyway, 
<coughs> the main steam comes through the first turbine, goes back, exits at two, goes back, gets reheated uh, the first time, uh, then comes back, expands through the second turbine, uh, goes back for additional reheat. So this is a double reheat cycle, which and there are plenty of units out there, big units do this sort of thing. Uh, and then to the third turbine, then to the condenser, and uh, we condense it all, saturated liquid, uh, back to the pump, and then back to the boiler. So this is what the uh, TS diagram looks like. Main steam is 32 megapascals, uh, 320 bar. Uh, so this is coming out of the feed water heater. This is what the uh, so this is, oh, this is super critical. See, this is not going through the dome. Say, look at that. It's uh, at a pressure high enough that it bypasses the dome. But anyway, so we're at 520C and then we expand and the isotropic expansion would be to 2S. I know it looks like 25, but that's 2S. And the real one is up here. So if this is to scale, the isotropic would drop you into two phase but when you uh, solve for that last enthalpy, you figure out that, oh, it's superheated actually, which would be good for the turbine, right? It keeps moisture out of the turbine. So then we're going back to the boiler and we're reheating to 440. We do the second turbine, we expand down. I think he's, uh, yeah, he's calling this, uh, so this is five bar. Yeah, that's, uh, I'm sorry. I'm getting, there's too many numbers up here. Uh, okay, so what we do see though is this intermediate pressure is four megapascals, which is 40 bar. So this uh, ISO bar is 40. And then this last one down here, um, let's see, we're coming out at, or not last one, but this next one is at five bar here. And then we have down here, uh, the condenser <coughs> pressure of 0.08 bar. So lots of pressures to keep up with here, but basically we just have these three uh, isentropic uh, expansions and then we have to adjust it for the 0.85 isentropic efficiency. So this is for the first turbine. Then for the second turbine we come down, we would be here, but we have we wind up here. And then for the third turbine, uh, we would come down here. Um, he doesn't show that. So this one would have would bend over, has to be adjusted over here. So they left that dashed line off of this TS diagram. But, so this is actually six uh, S. Yeah, because we're, we're showing that efficiency uh, turbines one, two, and three are all 85%. So there's turbine one, there's turbine two, and this is turbine three. So that's a little bit uh, incomplete on that diagram. I don't think I'd noticed that before. Okay, so here we go. Uh, you know, they, probably the hardest thing is just find all the state points. <clears throat> so, you know, state one, high pressure, just to look up straight out of the tables. Um, okay, so uh, this is at the exit of the first turbine. So here we go, we're uh, four MPA, which is 40 bar. And we have to solve for the isentropic step first. So we say S2S is equal to S1. And so we solve that and we get the uh, isentropic quality, which would be X2S. And then we use that to get the isentropic enthalpy, which is H2S. And then we go back to, this is the expression for the isentropic efficiency of the turbine. They've just rearranged it. So, you know, you can, to put it back the way we're used to, uh, you have to take this on this side. Uh, so it'd be H2 minus H1, and then you can uh, swap 
because this would be negative. So you take the negative sign inside swap and then divide and you get the isentropic efficiency of the turbine uh, is uh, where it be um, H1 minus H2 divided by H1 minus H2S is the way it shakes out. But anyway, they've already solved it in terms of H2. And so then you plug all of this in uh, with your isentropic uh, enthalpy. Uh, and bingo, you solve this. And so the actual enthalpy is 2747. 20, and so that would be right here. And if you go back and look in the steam tables, you'll see that superheated instead of two phase because we were two phase over here uh, and we became superheated here. So this is really the trick of doing this. If you can, if you can handle this state too, and you just have to do this math over uh, for each of the exit states on the turbine, then it's pretty much plug and chug. Um, so state three is a lookup, and then here we go. State four, we're going to do the same procedure we used on state two. Uh, so we see that what S four, the entropy at four isentropic is the entropy at three, and so that leads us to um, the enth the isentropic enthalpy at four. 2785, and then we go back to the uh, isotropic turbine efficiency equation and solve for the real H4, and bingo, it comes out 2863. Uh, five, uh, again, <coughs> is just a direct lookup. And then six, we're doing this, uh, the, this uh, exit of the turbine uh, procedure that we use two for so two four and six are basically the same procedure uh, you just have to work through and see uh, whether you're inside the dome or superheated and that sort of thing so uh, so that gets us six seven saturated liquids a lookup <clears throat> we do the pump trick for eight um, so uh, we've been through that before. <clears throat> oh, and so remember this specific volume times uh, delta P is isentropic work. So we have to divide that by the isentropic efficiency of, the, of that pump, which is 0.85. And so that's where the real work of the pump uh, is calculated. So that's the change from the isentropic case. So this division right here. Uh, and that gets us our actual enthalpy uh, at eight to uh, 11.83. Uh, and then we're simply plugging in. We don't have any feed water heaters, so we don't have any mass flow coefficients in this one. So um, just the enthalpy differences across the turbine, plugging in all those numbers, we get the turbine work, uh, specific turbine work per mass flow uh, out of the boiler. And then for the pump, uh, just the enthalpy difference. So we see this, that's for the cycle, uh, what the turbine produces minus what the pump requires. So we get 1462.8 uh, is the network. Uh, and then we have for the, for the boiler, uh, we have main steam, first reheat, second reheat. So taking all that in consideration, we're putting in uh, 3807.1 kilojoules per kilogram and cycle efficiency is just what network over uh, heat input. So we got 38.4%. And uh, this is some software stuff that came with the thermal book, which you don't have. So that's that. Um, oh, Brayton cycle. Well, I'm not going to handle uh, Brayton cycle in this recording. Uh, we still have some more talking to do about that. So I'm going to uh, end this now, and I hope this has been helpful. Uh, I don't know, but I'll be back on um, um, Tuesday, and we can talk about any issues you're having with these problems. So I hope you have a, having a great weekend. See you soon.